All right, so let's think about this in a new light. Suppose Dr. Adamson was hired as the assistant basketball coach to improve Shaquille O'Neal's free throws. Okay, true story. Back in the day when I'd watch him, especially with the Suns, inside of my head I thought, I could make him a better free throw shooter. All right, so let's say I do, and I make him a 70% free throw shooter. He is now able to make 70%, you know, because... Because I got his elbow in, you pick and flick, and I was able to get that ball to roll off his fingers, and he was able to make now 70% of his free throws. What does the probabilities in this one-in-one -one situation look like now? Does the hack-a-shack strategy still favor the team that wants to employ the strategy? Or would the team now stop with this hack-a-shack, which was my point the whole time. You don't want people, you don't want a coach to intentionally foul your player, then that player better be a better free throw shooter or get him out of the game. Well, let's see what happens if making a better free throw player is the better deal. So first, make a rectangle. Now, you guys, this is just a nice, I hope, visual way to see what's happening. You'll apply this same strategy in your assignment on drug testing, and even we'll do a little bit with the COVID to make it as real as possible. So inside of this rectangle is just to represent the bazillion times that this one-in-one -one situation happens. So I like to just imagine there's just, this thing is filled with dots, a bazillion of them. You know, a bazillion doesn't really mean anything. It's just getting at the idea of in the long run, if you do this thing over and over and over again. So if you do this over and over again now, this time it's 70 percent so of the bazillion dots in here what i want to show is that 70 percent of the time he makes and 30 percent of the time he misses now i'm not going to measure it out precisely but i'm going to try to have it visual so that it looks a little bit like 70 30. so let's put the 30 percent over here and the 30 percent of the time he just misses and if you miss the first shot, the turn is over, you get zero points for that turn. But 70% of the time, he'll make the first shot. And then let's once again break up the 70% into 70-30, because he's going to shoot again, and we'll assume that that 70-30 ratio still persists. So inside the 70%, We'll split it up into 70-30, 30% of the time he misses, and 70% of the time he makes. And so what this one up here represents is he made the first shot 70% of the time, and then of those makes, he misses 30% of the time. And now listen to that, it's of the 70%, he misses 30%. He misses 30% of the 70%. All right, we'll get to that in a second. And then down here, this is the case where 70% of the time he makes, and then on that 70% make side, he makes again. So it's a make-make situation. And I should have said this before, a make-miss is a one point where a make make is a two point situation. All right, so now on the 70% time, we split it up into 30% of the 70% and 70% of the 70%. All right, now let's talk about this. Can you imagine 70%, 70 per 100, 70 out of 100. So out of 100 tries, 70 of them, he made the first shot. Now, of those 70, 30% of the time, he misses the second shot. All right, so 30%. Here's a good way to think about this. So of the 70 per 100, 30 of those, okay, 30% is 10% three times. Why am I saying 10%? Because 10% is easy to, to, to think about. Can you imagine 70 things divided by 10, 10%? 70 divided by 10 is just seven. 30% is just 10% three times. 
70 divided by 10, seven. Seven three times, 21. So on this side, you've got 21. You've got 21%, let me put it in red. 21%, 30% of 70% is 21%. And then kind of similarly here, 70% of 70%. On the 70% time he makes, 70% of those he makes again. So what's 70% of 70%? Well, let's go 10%. What's 10% of 70%? 7. 70 divided by 10 is 7. 70% 70 is just 7 10 percents. 7 of those. So 7 sevens would be 49. So this would be a 49%. So 30% of 70% is 21%, 70% of 70% is 49%. Check it all out. 49 plus 21. 49 plus 21 is 70. So there's the 70 that he makes, and then the 30 that he misses over there. So when it's all said and done, look what we have now. What's the probability that in this new scenario, Shaquille gets two points? 49% of the time, he's going to now get two points. Probability of one point, 21% of the time. And probability of no points, 30% of the time. So compared to up here where 75% of the time you're getting a zero or a one, now coaches might look here and say, well, 70% of the time he's getting a two or a one. The strategy certainly has shifted. So what does this mean? If in this scenario, the 70% free throw shooting Shaq, if he does this one in one situation over and over and over again, a bazillion times, then 49% of the time, 49 out of every 100 times, he's gonna get two points. 21 out of every 100 times, 21% of this bazillion times, he's gonna get one point, and then 30 out of every 100, he's gonna get zero points. That's what the probability means. In the long run, out of a bazillion, for every 100, 49, for every 100, 21, for every 130. And then also make sure you spend some time on how do you figure out 30% of 70. Now I tried to paint a picture of do 10% of 70. Break it into 10. 70 divided by 10 is 7. Three of those is 21. 70% of 70. Take 70%, break it into 10 groups, that's seven. Do seven sevens, that's 49. But maybe you have another way to make sense to see what percentages go in each of these. But here's the thing, they should all add up to 100. Make sure that they do. All right, we're gonna transition into non-basketball stuff, some of this rug testing, because it's really relevant to the things we're seeing these days. But the same strategy, the same kind of thinking, as you break apart the pieces and think through the percentages, you'll be able to get to the probabilities and explain what those probabilities mean to make an informed decision. Is hack a shack a good strategy or not? That's why we do this, is to make informed decisions.